Michael Twitty is here uh, and is the elephant in the room. As you come in with your yarmulke, I am curious um, because there's a lot of commentary around what's going on in yeah. Israel. And the last time we were talking, you know, I was I was interested in having you back on before this even happened, because I feel like the, the world is so divided and somehow through food and your background, it it makes sense. You know, it all comes together that it can make sense. Like these things can exist in the same vessel and it's OK. Um, right. I'm not so sure now, though. I'm not mm-hmm. so sure. Um, where, where are you sitting? I've always said that food does not bring people together. People have to be intentional. About creating community and communalizing with each other. And I think right now, one of my biggest concerns with this issue, especially when it comes to social media, and our people, black people is there's a lot of uh, sterling and drawing and misinformation um, out there. I think that kind of like oversimplifying it and just basically shaming people into this thinking of that, if I don't put it in these very staunch terms, then I'm doing somebody wrong is not correct. I mean, we obviously know that in our own situations, African-Americans, it's complicated. If you ever said all black people, obviously African American would step up and say, wait a minute, who are we talking about? We say black in America. You know, who is receiving what privilege and what power when? And the, to an outsider, that doesn't that make sense until so you break it down. And for me, as someone who's been to Israel, Palestine twice, 2004, I think, 2014, um, as somebody who was black and Jewish, as somebody who has, you know, prayed in Jerusalem, who has seen and gone to um, the Arab Quarter and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and other places of, of renown. You know, it's it's hard to describe to people what how it feels to watch all this stuff go down. Um, if I may bring up like three quick points. Number one is that um, I totally disagree with the idea that Israel is white, Palestinians are brown. That's it. That's mm. not true. It's not true because 60% of Israelis um, either are partly or are from Mizrahi or Sephardi origins. In other words, Morocco, Yemen, Tunisia, Iran, Iraq. And then let's say we're not even including India, Ethiopia, or other communities on the on the fringe of that. And the reason why I say this is because an IDF person could be any color. These aren't just like I know that I know that I, when we think of Jewish in America, it's a Hasidic person mm-hmm. or it's somebody who's very secular, not religious, who blends in and has white is white identified. That doesn't have the same weight there. Although I would be a liar if I said that white supremacy, imperialism, colonialism did not play some small role, if not a large role, in how some people see this issue on the ground there. Mm. By the same token, to be Palestinian isn't always to be brown. There are black Palestinians. There are white Palestinians. There are Palestinians who have the same blue eyes and red hair that their crusader ancestors brought in. There are Palestinians who have been there since the Middle Ages, since since better when Arabs settled villages in ancient times, um, alongside Jews. There are also Palestinians that only showed up 100 years ago as farmers who migrated to the area to take advantage of the Ottoman, the British, and then the Kibbutzim, the, the the farmers, the Jewish farmers who came and settled the land before any deals, they were they were making the land fertile again. So it's very complicated. But what's not complicated to me, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that um, I understand the turmoil that um, Israeli Israelis doesn't just mean Jewish. It means, you know, mostly Jewish and 20 percent Arab. OK, and Arab Christian mm-hmm. and Muslim. They're Arab citizens of Israel. However, I will tell you right up front learning from them themselves and like they're not exact that sometimes they have certain advantages other times they have very discriminated against and i'm i'm against the occupation i do not believe in the occupation of of west bank nor gaza um and i don't believe in the settlers taking land and those settlers are definitely white and they're definitely from america and definitely of russian extraction and that's another reason why we have this this issue of image um but I'm going to tell you right quick, I don't care who bombed the hospital. All I know is these kids are dying. These babies are dying. And, you know, um, it is frustrating. Um, I, I hate it. On the other hand, I want people to understand 
the people who were killed in the initial terrorist attack by Hamas, Hamas is a Nat Turner. I've heard that on YouTube. Please don't compare, compare in my ear shot, compare Hamas to Nat Turner, Gabriel Prosser, or the revolutionaries. Is there a Palestinian revolution for liberation and um, against discrimination and for return of land? Yes. That's not the same thing as what happened when you go shooting up folk. You know, that's not the same thing at all. So I want people to be really clear about this and be of one accord. We don't want loss of human life, loss of civilian life. We don't even want war, you know, and we sure as hell don't want what's happening right now um, with the with the with the water sources being cemented in and the no electricity and no way in, way in and out of Gaza, which is an open air prison. I would agree with those things. And I want people to understand you can you can be someone like me. And hold those multiple views and understand the, the, the baseline is humanity. We're all made in the image of God, Islam and Judaism and Christianity. Believe this. Traditional African spirituality believes this. We are a reflection of the divine, the creator, the earth mother. We have a responsibility to take care of each other and each other's children, you know, mm. despite all these ancient lines. This is this is a tribal war, y'all. If it was Africans, they'd be calling it tribal war but okay. because we see it in the other light it's not seen that way your your average jew um who is not someone like me Supreze, but your average jew on the ground the average palestinian on the ground have the same paternal ancestor 3500 years ago genetically this issue has been going on for a long time and it's very complicated and god do i wish there wasn't a netanyahu a right-wing government Oh, Michael Twitty is here. Um, he is, of course, uh, the author of Kosher Soul. He is Jewish. He is Jewish by choice um, and maybe by birth um, on some other by, level. Also, yeah, by, dis by descent, yeah, but yeah, also by choice. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, and I also want to give a little news. Uh, a couple of the hostages that were taken by Hamas, um, Americans have been released. Um, two of them that were in cap captivity. Uh, according to the IDF, the Israeli Dis Defense Force, they confirmed that Judith Ranan, 59, and her daughter Natalie, 17, uh, were released. Their condition is not immediately clear, uh, mm -hmm. but they have been released. So so things are are moving. But again, to identify as Jewish as you do and to have that, what you just said, not many people could say that mm -hmm. on uh, anywhere publicly, right? There is a, there's right. a fear. Alicia Keys got excoriated for an innocuous post, a very a, a post that had nothing to do with nothing. People, you it got millions of views and it got spread widely. And I was like, oh, this is this is getting crazy. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Now that 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 in, it, it infuriates me, and that's that's why you know myself as a um, Raven, a friend of mine who's a creator on TikTok and Instagram, also black and Jewish. We've had a we've had a hard time because you know if the question becomes how much do we say? I didn't say nothing about this conflict until now. I mean, I have many friends in the food world, like Reem Kasim, Layla Hadid, Palestinian, and for the most part, Layla is, is a little more a little more open about it because she's from Gaza. Reem has been a little bit more, but she, you know we have the same feeling like we can't ever say the right thing for everybody. Right, everybody's always. Somebody's always going to be mad, mad at you for one point or another, you know. But I think the thing with um, Alicia Keys was so stupid. Also, I, I saw this very arrogant um, Israeli rep on TV ask this Indian woman, a woman of Indian heritage, to say, um, on British TV, she was wearing a red and green sari. It happened to be her grandmother's sari. It happened to be her grandmother's anniversary of her birthday. And he said, why are you wearing those Palestinian colors? I'm like, boo, please. She is Hindu. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Why are you? I think that's kind of oversensitivity. Or looking for the the us versus them. Because yes, as long uh, as there's mm -hmm. as long as there's a line that can be drawn and you're forcing people to make a choice, right? As if someone's choosing terrorism, right? And this is the thing that's infuriating to me, that you're uh, you're trying to put people in a position to to denounce terrorism as if anyone is for terrorism. Anyone right. is for somebody going in indiscriminately killing people. I don't know anyone that is. So to even pose that question is almost it's a tr it's a it's a it's a trap. It's on so many yeah, levels. Yeah. Yes. To ask it to ask a, especially an Arab activist or Palestinian leader, do you denounce Hamas or anybody else who is who you think is you know whatever? Do you denounce Hamas? 
Um, it's kind of like asking us during the, the summer of rebellion again and racial rec recon reconciliation, asking us, do you feel sorry for that target? Do you, are you against burning down a target? I, <laughs> is the target more important than human life? Is that the real issue here? Why do you know? I I I mean, I would I would feel I would feel okay with someone asking me, "Do you denounce Netanyahu?" I am I'm not one of those people that's totally against the state of Israel or the land of Israel existing. Okay, but am I against a right wing government that obviously wants to uh, increase settlements, increase racism, increase um, inequality? Um, um, spread other forms of hatred and do so in the name of fascism. You, you damn right I am. I don't want. Listen, I don't want these kids in on either side of the border, but especially right now in Gaza and in and in the West Bank. If they don't understand, they're inculcating trauma in these in these people. It's going to go on for more generations. I mean, y'all, what is the first law you learned about in history class? An eye for an eye. Oh, yeah. That comes from this part of the world. Yeah. I was say Sunday, Sunday school, right? not even history Sunday class. School. That's history. right. Yeah. Sunday school, yeah. too. You, you're seeing it right in front of your face. And it's so difficult. Because I know that for many people on the ground over there, you know what? They live lives that are intertwined. This is extremely painful. Some of the people that Hamas killed were actually poor against the occupation. You know, kill an Arab medic who was actually, you know, I'm sure you asked him. He said, I want my, my family's land and house back, but I'm also, I'm here to help. I'm here to make peace. If I can help get people out of the situation, they killed him. They killed uh, half of a gay couple that was about to get married. You know, they killed everybody. But at the same point in time, if I, I look at it like this, that when the Israeli government says things like, you know, the citizens and Hamas are all intertwined. Well, what happens when you don't give the the people who were there many choices for access to medical care, food, resources? Who are they going to go to? Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. So this is not really about the housewives. I feel like yeah. I sense that your mood is not really about Nini and them. All right, Michael yeah. Twitty is here. <laughs> Michael Twitty is here. Um, I know Lamont has to bounce. Uh, he's going to host. And I, I want to ask this question of everyone. You know, um, it, can we have this conversation? Can we have this conversation with, without it leading to people being labeled and canceled? Is this a conversation that can be had? And what what solution can come from having this conversation, Michael Twitty? Uh, I, I invited you on way before this happened. Uh, we've yeah. been trying to get you back on for a number of, of weeks and, and months and years, actually, since I first had you on, because I find you so delightful um, and, and so honest. Right. And so so forthright in the way that you see the world and so loving as well. Uh, so it just happens that you're here today. So I also think that that's part of a little bit of kismet or fate. Um, so I appreciate you, but I want to, I want to continue this conversation. We're going to take some calls. There's a couple of people want to talk about the housewives of Atlanta. I'll allow it. It's Friday. Uh, <laughs> Lamont is going to be heading out to, uh, the improv, the DC improv. Where yeah. Yeah. I, but I got a question before I leave though. Okay. Uh, okay. I have Go a ahead. I'm it's, sorry. It's, All right. Yeah. It's got, I've been, I've been waiting and why and just listening. Cause you know, uh, obviously, you know, Michael, you, you, the way more versed than I could ever be. Uh, but for the lay person, right? Because I'm in these yeah. conversations all day for the last week. For the for the lay person, the common, the unstudied, the unlearned, um, social media is a place that's deliberately set up for us to pick sides about everything. Yes. I mean, it's just by design. So this is just one more topic that forces us into that position. But for the lay person, without extensive historical context, without nuance, without uh you know empathy wh whose side are we supposed to pick like whose side should we be yeah. on everybody talks about the side of right and 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 you know the the governor of my state comes out and says maryland we stand with israel uh the president comes out was unequivocal we back you forever and then you know and then you get to reading and then you get to peeling layers back and you'll be like well wait a minute why am i forced to 
uh, why is this decision made for me? So I, I'm asking you as a as a black Jew, as a student, as a traveler who's been there, um, um, you know, knowledge of history and context on both sides. Like whose side are we supposed to be on? The um, simplest I, answer possible. Yeah, I've said I've said to people before, if you're part of the Ummah, the Muslim community, I really understand why you feel the way you do. I get it. Okay. Because Ummah means brotherhood, sisterhood. You're supposed to look after each other. If you're part of the Mishpacha, the Mishpacha, the family of Jews. Where I'm not just, that's not my church. I'm literally the son of Abraham and Sarah. That's my mm. family. Mm. Understand the way you feel you do. And we even have a divide in Christians. You're a Palestinian Christian. The evangelical Christians don't have your back right now mm. when it comes to this. But here's the here's the best answer I can give. Understand this issue the best you can from the viewpoint of the everyday people, not the leaders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. How they feel. Look at multiple news sources. Think through it. You know, um, I'm I'm looking at anywhere from our own MSNBC to Al Jazeera to BBC to other places. You know, some people will tell you BBC is too to this or to this. You know. Uh, Balance that out. Balance that out. Listen to multiple narratives. Understand why people feel the way they do. And then ask yourself a very important question. If this were me, how far would I go? Uh -huh. What would I do? You know? You know, when you've when you've been exiled and kicked out and hurt and harmed and and gassed and and whatever. What do you bring to the equation? Let me give you a really quick story before you run. I want you to know here this. I, I've often said to people in the past couple of days, I just want you to imagine this. So the average person in Israeli society, especially um, in the cities, is going to be a descendant of somebody whose ancestors arrived probably about, I don't know, the 40s and 50s after the establishment of Israel and were from a Muslim country, Arab country, or 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 Iran, okay? And that person is going to have roots in someone who literally had to get up in the middle of the night and leave with everything and have the clothes off their back, okay? And then you have the kid, the, the Arab kid, who is in one of the occupied territories, who's having their home busted into in the middle of the night. And so you have these two people who, if you showed an average American, could not tell them apart. You took away all the religious guard. They both are like Middle Eastern men. Let's, uh, I'm using men as an example, even though women is even deeper, but I can't speak to that because I'm not a woman. I'm, I'm not a sister. But I know this much. I've seen what happens when you have some dude who has a Mizrahi background and someone who's a Palestinian. <laughs> Basically, the victims of some of the very same sort of like political forces and pressures and hatreds, but in a ter terrific power imbalance. And you and you you know already this person feels a generational hurt and pain and trauma, and this person is going to persist in a generational hurt and pain and trauma. Hmm. I don't know what to tell the world about this issue because you know we've never had anything like it in our in our terms. We never have. But I do know this much. If you really were if you want to understand these conflicts that seem unfathomable to those of us who are not in them. Start with the feelings of the everyday civilian. Ask yourself what she would do in her shoes. And then work your way backwards. Put it all in front of you. Ask friends, ask neighbors who have more of a dog in this fight on in this country. Okay? Call people up, have conversations. We're no longer bound by borders when it comes to the internet. Ask questions. Um, and then draw your own conclusions. And but also defer to this one thing. The most important thing is not hurting each other, harming or killing each other, and resolving our conflicts other ways. Which of course in this in this issue is not that damn simple. Hmm. Right. I was gonna say, is that even possible as we watch folk? Um, I mean, I just saw this morning President Biden is committing a certain amount of money, billions of dollars, billions of dollars, and and there's a there's a tie to Ukraine. There's, there's like a lot of threads that are tied in this 
all in this whole region and everything that's going on with Russia as well, to your point. Mm -hmm. There there are allegiances that make no sense until you understand what's really happening globally. 866-801-8255. And as you, Michael Twitty, a Jewish person, how are you viewed? Are you viewed as a sellout? Says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves things is the one?